everyone, welcome back to your weekly update. My name is Amy. I am here at Dayton Nursery in Norton, Ohio, and it is Friday, July 30th, 2021. So first and foremost this week, I wanna give a huge thank you to our customers, to new customers. All I can say is wow, the results from the Blueberry Fest. So many of you came and joined us to celebrate this wonderful fruit. We had such a good time. We gave away 540 snow cones and 684 hot dogs. And I can't tell you how many people said it was their first time to our place. So thank you very much for all who came to celebrate. Like I said, we had a great time. We did hay rides. We had the bubble zone. Uh, the lady that did the glitter tattoos was very, very popular. She had a long line all day. And you guys bought almost 300 pounds of blueberries. I am also right here next to the market and uh, we are very lucky this week to finally have gotten Cyberling Sweet Corn. Not only do we have it here in our market, but they have it at their farm stand, also on Greenwich Road in Norton, so you can find it in both places. It has been absolutely terrific. It has been sweet, juicy, tender, and the ears are actually slightly on the small side. There aren't those huge, huge ears that I actually really prefer. And I was lucky enough to actually today tour the Cyberling Farms with my son. We had lunch there. We had a great time, and I'll insert all that footage right now. So this week I'd like to get to some gardening items, some things we definitely need to talk about, including it is bug season. Bugs are everywhere, um, and especially all the rains have leached the fertilizer out of your soil, so we'll talk about that when I get back. But I saw them bring out a whole cart of brand new weeping red buds, and I just love them, and I wanna show those to you, along with a few other things, so I'll be right back. So like I said, I wanted to talk about two trees this week. We just brought these out. I don't even know where these were. Uh, but I am excited to see them. This is a Ruby Falls Weeping Red Bud, but what's so interesting about it, look at how low it is grafted. Look how short that thing is. How cute would that be in the landscape uh, near the corner of a bed? So it has this uh, kind of purplish foliage all year round and a beautiful weeping shape. And then early, early in the spring, it has like a magenta pink flower all along the branches. And these are priced at $1.99 but they would be a great addition to a lot of landscapes now another tree we just brought out that are one of my favorites is the Japanese stewardia these are nice because they're small so easy to plant they are $99 each and maybe two weeks ago I took a bunch of pictures and video of some larger stewardia that were blooming in the tree bed uh, they were covered in bumblebees so what that means the flowers are great for pollinators. But what I like about this tree is not only does it bloom a little bit later in the summer, after a lot of those ornamental trees do, but it has really nice shape and it has peeling bark also for you know fall and winter interest. And you know I never keep my word. I said I was only gonna talk about two things, but it looks like the viburnum have been restocked too. This is the Judai viburnum. We have popcorn viburnum. If you need a plant where other plants do not grow, a viburnum is definitely a way to go. They are very, very easy to grow. And then this one is the Korean spice, so it has a fragrant flower in the spring. And this one, popcorn, has a plethora of white ball-shaped flowers in the spring as well. Not quite fragrant like this one, but both very easy to grow and will grow just about anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna head back to the Owl Barn to finish this week's video. Those are definitely two of my all-time favorite trees. But one of those things I wanted to get to this week is fertilizer. It's been raining and raining and raining uh, so far these days. And what that does is it actually leaches out a lot of the nutrients in your containers. So what I would suggest for you to do is to fertilize those again. Uh, these could be your hanging baskets, your patio pots, things like that. You wanna use either something like plant tone or better yet, something like, like water soluble, like Peters or miracle Grow. Uh, your plants will really benefit. They'll do much better until fall when you pull them out and replace them with uh, pansies or mums. And another thing I wanted to warn everybody about, uh, we've been seeing a lot of samples. It is bug season. One of those samples we've been seeing a lot of is scale. That's kind of like either usually white, sometimes brown markings along stems or branches. Uh, magnolia scale is really a big deal right now. 
but it's easy to control. Um, a lot of times it does not harm the tree. Sometimes it does, but I would suggest a control method. One of those control methods is the all seasons horticultural oil. You will want to spray that once and then again in seven to 10 days for two total applications. And be sure to spray the entire trunk and the branches of the plant you are spraying. Another plant we talk a lot about here is bagworm. This is very prevalent on arbovitas, some spruce. Um, they kind of look like little pine cones, but they're not pine cones. They, those cones actually contain the caterpillars. You probably will see these caterpillars on the branches now, and you may start seeing damage. So I would definitely suggest, no matter what kind of plant you have, like those evergreens I had mentioned, go out there and inspect them, because bagworms, like I said, can do a lot of damage, so we want to control those as we can. So one of those control methods is a insecticide containing acephate. Another one is spinazad, which is uh, the Captain Jack's dead bud brew. Either one of those could work very well on the bagworm. So one more thing I wanted to talk about this week, and it is dividing and transplanting your German iris. Yes, you dig up these plants right in the middle of the summer. It is very beneficial because as these plants age, they actually flower less and less. So they actually benefit from the division process, and it's actually very simple. You just dig up the clump, wash away the soil, divide it into divisions, and at this point you can cut back the foliage a bit for easy handling. Then when you're done with all that, you just replant the divisions, maybe 12 to 18 inches apart in very shallow soil. Do not plant these deep, and don't forget to share some of those divisions with your friends. Here at Dayton's, we have an entire webpage dedicated to dividing and transplanting the German iris, and I will link that below in case you had any questions. Well, I wanna thank you again for watching this week. I don't think there'll be a video next week. I am taking a two-day break. Uh, me and my son are heading over to Kennywood in Pennsylvania for a few days of much needed fun. So hopefully we'll see you soon. Um, if you have any questions in the meantime, please give us an email or a call. We will be here to answer them for you. Okay, thanks, bye-bye.